You're checking off all the boxes of horror, man. Oh, raise it up. Hey guys, welcome back to Ken Cinema Sofa. If it's your first time here, I'm your brother Ken, a missionary of 12 years in Japan. But this channel is all about exploring my other passion, awesome cinema. Let's get back into it. The Haunting of Hill House, episode three. So far, I'm really enjoying this series. Midnight Mass is more theologically rich, but this series, like Flanagan's other offerings, uh, you know, I've seen uh, Dr. Sleep. It still, you know, considers deeply theological things, philosophical things, metaphysical things, especially this show, more metaphysical. So in the last episode, we got to see um, more of the sister or the older sisters. I still don't remember everyone's names, but the older sister's side of the story. Um, her field, which is, you know, a funeral home director. But I'm sensing some trauma, some deep trauma from what uh, this family has gone through because they seem to have a preoccupation with death. But I think it really what it is, is it's just this is a manifestation of really wanting to know what happened to their mom and what happened in that house. All we got to see of the older brother, mostly in the present, was him still sitting on the floor reeling, trying to tell his sister what happened. Right. It was also quite jarring to see the sister go to work on Nellie, right? I remember Nell's <laughs> name, probably because, you know, I, I saw The Haunting back when I was, you know, in my teens in the movie theater. Um, yeah, that's all I remember. Nothing to write home about. <laughs> But I do remember now. As I said before, I like that Flanagan takes his time and creates something much more deep and emotionally involving than a simple horror story. I'm guessing that they're gonna meet together and, you know, have the funeral, see the sister's body. I wanna know exactly how she died. And we'll see if I have any more theological tidbits to give to you guys. I, I saw somebody in the comments was saying that they were looking forward to my reaction in this episode because uh, it seems like I'll have a lot to say. So we'll see. I'm excited about that. A little bit creeped out too, but <laughs> that is the nature of the reactor's job. So let's get into this. But before we do, please like and subscribe. Join us on the channel. Hey, hit the notification bell so you will know when I drop more content for you guys. It's for you. Come on. So let's get into it. The Haunting of Hill House, episode three. Let's get it. Should have made myself some tea for this tonight. Oh, here we go. We're starting off already. This could be just an adult. No. Maybe. It's not the nightmare. Okay. Oh man, why are you starting me off early like this? I'm really freaked out, huh? Thumbs up a little. Yeah, exactly. No, he's squeezing too tight. Nothing. In some ways, that's creepier than, you know, some boogeyman being in there. Whose the hand was I holding? So it looks like Flanagan's directing all of these. I went downstairs to the kitchen to get a snack. And that's the first night I saw him. Mr. Smiley. So I knew he was coming. That's how I always know. Creep. Then my doorknob. Then he's in my room. So now we're seeing what she does. Too big. He's always smiling. Child psychology, huh? Yeah. All of these kids have been influenced, impacted by what happened in that house. Where does Mr. Smiley live, Kelsey? If she is a child psychologist, my sister is one as well. Under the house. Mm. In the basement? This is quite different from what I expected from her, from what I've seen so far with her, you know, like the nightclubber, you know, but people have a different life at night. It's kids like us who've been through more than other kids. It's interesting. We're tougher than That's us. That's a nice psychological touch. She identifies with her as, as a kid, right? We kids. No one ever gets in. Mr. Smiley does. Our other two foster kids are thriving. We 
You just want the same for her. Foster care system isn't the easiest place to grow up. I wonder, is that what happened to them too? Were they taken away from their dad? Anything fancy, we can sell them. Ooh. Hang on. This is fancy. Ooh. 49 Claude de Riera. How did you know that? Oh. So she has special gifts, eh? Do you feel cold right there? Yep. I told you. My apologies. No, no, it's a, it's a very small spot, just, just right here. You're out of mustard. You're almost out of turkey. You know there are people you can actually pay to make you lunch? Some of them even deliver it right to your office. So you driving over here every day. I like the drive. It gives me time to think. I get anything from her. You always figure it out. She's like a brick wall. I know the type. <laughs> Maybe you send messages to it. Or just find me. Don't know. Here, let me see. <laughs> I don't know, it's just something funny to me, all these huh? little people walking what? around like this. Like, it's like they have a, a little world, you know? <laughs> Suppose I was that way too. Such a sick bag. How do you know? <laughs> Things change, man. Come on, get with it. I was trying to take ownership of something that doesn't belong just to me. I'm offering to share the book. I'll give each of you 8% of any royalties, and if it sells as well as my publisher thinks it will, I'm trying to do the right thing. The here, right Cheryl. thing? Yeah. What, is the guilt getting in the way of your new lifestyle? Dad's tabloid horror show, I've heard Luke and Nellie's ghost stories. No offense, Nellie. Okay. I just would rather focus on living my actual life right now. Mm. Right? Yep. Blood money. <laughs> yep. Blood money, yep. Mm, something tells me everybody's not on board with that. Okay. What in the world just happened? <laughs> This is what happened when you watch things like this at night. Is that the same girl? Obviously, it looks like you go to the same place, huh? Shouldn't be surprised she's there. Playing with Dudley. Why are you yelling at me? Because the dumbwaiter is not a toy. It can be dangerous. That's all you need to say, Benny. You have to be so mean about it. She's not mean. She's scared. Should have asked her, what are you scared of? Luke? What are you doing? Trying to take a ride in this elevator? Dumbwaiter. I'm gonna get in trouble. I won't tell. Please, come on. It's a perfect You won't tell if you elevator. fall through that thing either. Capacity 200 pounds. Luke? Theo? Luke? This is like the Luke? worst place to be. All the best recipe ingredients for absolute, absolute horror. horror. Bring me up, please. Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, we're checking off. Oh! You checking off all the boxes of horror, man. Oh, God, Lord. Oh, my. Raise it up. By then, it would have gotten him, right? Oh, my God, man. Did you rip your shirt? Oh, no. Man, that thing tried to grab him. Man, I can see why he became a drug addict. I mean, if this is just the beginning of what he went through as a kid, what, we're only on episode three. <laughs> I still, still can't believe I saw that, man. 
Lord have mercy. What? How do these people just collect themselves and go back to sleep after stuff like that? You were awake. Um. Oh, is this she's just telling her? No. Why, oh, did you find her? No, she's not out front. I and I'm still missing two rooms. Oh I'm gonna check the kitchen. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh oh. It's gotta be Henry. Oh, my Is this when they first find out about their sister? No. I mean, we didn't. We didn't know you were <clears throat> into bridesmaids. Can you get my dress? Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll tell them. Tell them what? She killed herself. Do they even know? Yeah, Nellie killed herself? Yes, that's better than lying. We keep trying. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, okay? First they said Abigail's not real. Now they said the basement's not real. They said it's probably just a crawl space. And whatever was down there, you definitely don't believe me. There's lighting down there. It's like barrels of ale. Mm. So that thing, I mean, whatever it is in this house is definitely, I mean, it's malevolent, but it's intent on bringing physical harm. Because you watch some haunting stories and they just want to scare, right? But this thing actually tried to grab him and had such a, a grip that it ripped the shirt off. Oh, hi. You didn't get me that time, Flanagan. Would you mind if I took a quick look down in your basement? I like this format, how they're going back and forth through time. They're showing the traumatic events that these adults went through when they were kids and how they're using that to help children now. I just put together why she wears the gloves now. I had to know, why didn't I get that before? Now I see it. It's not just uh, a phobia of touching things or dirt, right? She's trying to block the, the sensory input, right? It would be too much if she was always walking around. No. <laughs> a normal basement. That's what we keep telling her. I'll dive back in with her this week. Thank you. Thanks. Please don't tell me this guy is a pedophile. You know, there's not a single record of this basement. It's not on any of the blueprints. Mm -hmm. They didn't want anyone to find it. But you did. Who is that? Honey? Uh. His wife, I guess? Like, where is she? She's probably too distraught to even come outside. That has got to be so hard. How heavy a gift to have like that. When she was on the sofa and she said, no, don't, I, I just knew automatically what was going on. And if that is what was going on with that girl and with others that may have gone into that house, oh, whew. This is not exactly the same, but in the church, by the power of the Holy Spirit, there are spiritual gifts of prophecy that have been active since the Old Testament times. God had prophets that would be able to hear and, and see in the spiritual realm. So one of the main differences between ESP and empath abilities as we see in the show and 
prophecy, as we see in biblical scripture, is that the empath abilities are coming from sources that are unknown, whereas the prophetic abilities are clearly coming from God, Yahweh, who bequeaths these abilities to those that receive his Holy Spirit. Throughout the Old Testament, we see lots of laws from God teaching Israel as they are now his new children since they came out of Egypt and made a pact, a covenant with him at Mount Sinai. Stay away from witchcraft. When you go into the, the new realm, the new land, the, the promised land, Canaan, that I'm going to give you, the neighboring countries, do not be like them, do not make friends with them, do not practice witchcraft like they do. Witchcraft in scripture is, or any of these psychic abilities, is likened to um, rebellion. When you receive prophetic guidance from God, it is from the utmost highest source which is God himself, if he's sharing these gifts with you and these visions with you, it is a sign that you are submitted to him and that you are in league with the greater good, his vision for the world. He gives these prophecies as a means to show his glory, to save the nations, and ultimately to save the souls of humanity. But in the psychic realm, well, biblically, that falls under the realm of other spiritual beings. And any spiritual being that is not working under the lordship and the reign and the rule of God, Yahweh, is an evil entity. The Bible speaks that Satan presents himself as an angel of light. I talked about some of this in the Indiana Jones Temple of Doom reaction video. Check that out for more. Satan presents a kind of light because he's from heaven. He knows the way it works and he knows how to make things appear to be uh, divine and benevolent. But ultimately, he has his own goal, which is utter destruction of everything in life and in reality that is perfectly made by God. Everything good, everything pure, everything that can produce life and continue to produce on its own, all of that stinks to Satan. He hates that. And so he and the other angels that rebelled with him are really the spirits that people are talking to when they have these different uh, encounters, these spiritual encounters. So is that saying that some people will never have any kind of uh, preternatural experience with some kind of otherworldly uh, event? That is beyond me. I don't know. But what I do know, according to scripture, is that there is one God, one Lord over all, and those that act apart from him that want to teach you something or show you something else other than what God wants you to see, they cannot be trusted because God is acting in the best interests of the world, that we will be saved, cleansed, sanctified, and made his children if we're willing. That's for the millions, maybe billions of angels and spirits that fell with Satan in rebellion against God. You're rolling the dice on that, on your life, your future, and the, and the welfare of your family if you engage in any type of psychic abilities and that are gonna connect you with those things. You know, your dad was telling me a story about the wine you found. Your grandmother was like that too. She was sensitive. And I've wondered if you and your sisters might be a little sensitive. Shirley says some things sometimes when she's sleeping that are Hippos don't like what? Sensitive people, they sometimes need, well. Are those gloves? We'll talk a lot more about it as you get older. But in the meantime, if you're feeling overwhelmed and you think nobody will understand, you can talk to me. 15,000. Wow. Thanks. Now it's your insurance going to kill you for this. You didn't say 8%, right? No hug. You got a couple things wrong in there, by the way. So you finally read it. That was really wild stuff, considering that you were asleep for what? Like 99% of it? What are you going to do with the money? Car, purses, travel? No. I'm going to get my...
and PhD. Ah, so she's going down to see her sister, huh? Jesus wept. Did she say Jesus wept? Gotta go back. Jesus wept. Ah, okay. She did say Jesus wept. That is the shortest scripture in the Bible. And a lot of people still use that uh, as a prayer. I know my mom did when I was a kid. That's all we used to say when dinner <laughs> was ready. She didn't know better back then. She was a new Christian. Oh, Lord. Don't do it. I mean, do it because we need to see what happened, but. You okay? No, sorry. Residual account. Oh, you're not going to tell her, are you? I mean, it's, it's just as bad for you as it is for me. You might want to come up with an excuse, though, secret family. You know, something that's going to piss her off less than the truth. Oh, hang on. Are you okay? Yeah, just we barely said two words to each other. How are you? How was your day? Stuff like that. Well, let's mm -hmm. see. My day. I found out that a nine-year-old that I was treating was getting molested by her foster dad. Now, that just means the girl goes back into the system. It's a Campbell at best. So, you know, good job, me. That's true. Oh. She's probably like, who is Nellie? Should we talk about your day, or would you rather come to bed? See you. I need you to get Luke and Nell to the car. You get in, lock the doors. Don't unlock them until you see me come outside. Do you understand? Oh, it's happening. Get them to the car. Hey! Stop! Well, guys, that is episode three, <laughs> a touch of The Haunting of Hill House. Interesting, interesting. It is getting deeper and deeper and they keep teasing what happened in that house the last night. I don't know exactly what happened yet. Something with the mom, whatever spirits in that house affected the mom. But, you know, there's a lot of, that's going on. For one thing, we have people, well, okay. Firstly, amazing episode. I, I really enjoyed it. It's very deep and raw. Um, I feel that we're dealing with trauma and how to handle trauma, right? Um, handling it in the right way, handling it in the wrong way. You could say that, you know, her kind of sexual hunger for, you know, this partner of hers is a way to numb the pain. But on the flip side, you could look at it as that she wants to touch people, wants to connect with people because all her life, you know, she wasn't able to touch people. She was afraid to, right? But I do feel like a bigger case is made for people dealing with trauma in the wrong way. Like pe nobody is talking to each other about these visions and experiences they're having, right? They really need to sit down, talk and share it. Look, I saw whatever, whatever last night. And on the night my sister died, I saw her ghost, you know? And um, I, I, how is it that all these years, they haven't shared these things with each other? Like. The girl was asking her brother about, how could you write that in the book? I was the one that found the cellar or the, the basement, right? But how is it that they had not talked? I get the feeling like they have not talked about these things yet. So some of them seem to be quite close, but at the same time, so far away from each other, you know? It's so much healthier to connect and to talk. Man, when you talk with people and acknowledge the things you've experienced, especially if they're spiritual or supernatural or preternatural, you can save 
your loved ones or other people from feeling like they're going insane. If you let them know, look, no, I experienced the same thing, you know? And not just with supernatural things, but with hurt and trauma, when you keep it to yourself and you keep a facade of, you know, strength and, you know, you allow other people to go through it alone. And I guess that really means a lot to me considering where I am in Japan. This country has one of the highest suicide rates in the world. There is a forest, uh, Aokigaoka, Ao, Ao, Aokushima forest. Wait a minute, let me look that up. It's at the foot of Mount Fuji. Aokigaha, that is called the suicide forest. And people go there, it's popular that they go there to commit suicide. There are actual uh, people there that's, you know, social workers with megaphones speaking into the forest, trying to, you know, deter people from killing themselves, letting them know like you have a family and if you do this, I'm not entirely sure that the Japanese way of going about it is healthy either because the things that they say they're not really talking about the value of the person. They're talking more about the hurt and the debt that you're going to incur and, and bring on your, your family, you know, which once again is a very classic Japanese thing, you know, worrying about honor, giri, which is obligation, um, and the group unit, right? The importance of the unit rather than the value of the individual. Um, that's always been an issue here in Japan. And so because of that, there is a high suicide rate here. And, you know, as a missionary, many people have told me like, you know, Ken, people suffer here silently and you will never know. I was teaching uh, business English in Hitachi. Some of you may know that company. Uh, it's huge here in Japan. Teaching business English and in the middle of my writing grammar on the board, my student, she's sitting there in a nice suit. She just burst into tears, crying. Another student of mine just, you know, said, matter of factly, I have thought about suicide. Yes. And it's just, you know, you would never see it from the outside, you know, appearance. Um, and so, if, you know, if people would just learn to talk and communicate with each other, share with each other what they're going through or what they've seen or what they may have seen, right? Um, you, you know, in the, you may get closure, uh, emotional comfort from that, or you may even, you know, share with someone else that they're not crazy, that you, you, you're experiencing the same thing. So yeah, man, the scares in this one, they really turned it up. I feel like the second episode kind of calmed down a bit. Uh, it was really building the relationships, giving us more back story, you know, on, on giving us more history, backstory on the, the characters and the family. But this one, man, I mean, it made, it made me jump. It, I was dreading this. So some things I'm wondering about. I want to know what it is she saw and experienced when she touched Nell's body, right? That right there, like, horrified me. And that scream of hers horrified me just as much as the scream that same actress let out in Midnight Mass. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I won't say anything. Check it out. Phenomenal actress. I don't know what her name is. One of the other things I think stands out is that up until now, it's been kind of iffy, wondering whether or not we're dealing with a true haunting or, um, you know, mental health issues, right? Or it started to become a mix of both. But with this episode, it was clearly, all right, yeah, there are mental issues involved and trauma because of demonic supernatural activity, okay? When that thing came crawling out under the crawl space, you know, in the basement and ripped the boys, we didn't see it, but he had to have ripped his shirt off. I mean, I knew he had to have gotten him because from the moment, you know, the cut was showing him coming closer to the boy. And then when they cut to them trying to bring him back up, you know, in the dumb wait, dumb waiter. <laughs> um, I knew that by that amount of time, you know, that it passed, that he had to have at least gotten his hands on, you know. 
And wow, they followed through and showed that that was exactly the case, right? When he came back up and I saw that tear in his clothes on that little boy. Uh, okay, well, uh, will I do another one tonight? Let's see, it's 9.15 p.m. here in Tokyo, Friday. It's still early, right? I still hear people out and about outside. Not too scary, not too creepy. We'll see, we'll see, I don't know. If you see me wearing the same clothes in the next video, then you know what happened. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed my reaction. Give me a thumbs up if you did, thumbs down if you didn't. I'm doing better, always growing, always getting better. God bless you wherever you may be in the world right now, and I'll see you next time on the sofa.